He's totally ready for that. Totally ready for that. Good evening, B1. I know, I'm so B1. used to saying morning. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking, listen, I do a devotional every day. We do praise songs every night. Huh? It was going yellow for a minute. Oh, well, I don't doubt that because a little switch there turned it off the minus 20 dB so that it can hear everyone at the table. Give us a second to open up our viewing device so we can Gage. check on you guys as you're saying things. Oh, you can grab mine. Oh, uh, where's it at? Right there. Can Nathan grab it? Yes. We're completely organized right here. There should be a <laughs> pink phone case in that purse. You can just grab my phone out of it. Just grab that. Oh my gosh. And Nathan Sorry, just almost killed you. himself. So you can't see that, but he almost did. In his defense, Good. my purse is really heavy. His, her purse is ridiculously heavy. Her purse is made for smuggling out live human beings out of communist bloc countries. And it's been converted into a carrying case now that the Cold War is over. Yes. Um, <laughs> so. Jeez. Good. Oh, hey. Hi, Sh hey, Jean. Uh, Cheryl. Patricia. Good to see you guys tonight. Patricia. I know what you're thinking. I'm less Josh-like than you're used to seeing on a Wednesday night. <laughs> yes. We had to adjust the camera down. <laughs> oh, he takes the dig. Boom. Takes the dig. <laughs> Roasted. Well, uh, you know, with my hair this big, I'm taller than you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You know? Your head shaved, mine's yeah, grown actually, up an inch or two. We're kind of the same height, actually. I always well, make these short jokes. Well, that's what I'm saying, but you know what? With the hair now, though, I think I'm taking the lead. I Better, think. Yeah, I would say you can yeah, put on probably. tall sneakers. Weird. I do, I'm tall. Yeah, I'm wearing, <laughs> he actually does have some. He has some. I think you kids call them kicks. Okay. Um. <laughs> I don't remember anyone ever calling them kicks in my generation. So. Well, I thought maybe. I mean, they're called sneakers, which again is not an actual cool name either. But right. Anyways. So no, Josh is not here tonight. Um, his father-in-law is in the hospital, had a stroke. Um, his family is going through some stuff, and he's working overtime. Um, uh, Josh is an amazing person for bearing yes, burdens. I'm always like, man, there's no possible way. And he's like, I'll just take on one more thing. Because <laughs> that's that's Josh never told somebody in need no. Him and Angie, tell you what, yes. great people. We are building them up. We're lifting them up in prayer tonight. Keep them in your prayers. Keep their family in your yep. prayers. Yep. Uh, we want a good outcome. We want them to come home. We want them to be fully functional. Um, her father is going to be going to Van Mater, which means he's at least out of the woods um, as far as a life-critical situation. Mm -hmm. But um, any of you that have ever had to be long-term caretakers or understands what happened when someone goes through that kind of thing, um, you know, we just want to be in prayer for their family yeah. that they are, you know, so good people. Hey, Annette Andrews, how are you guys doing? Good to have you out there. Rachel Scholl, good to have you. You know, it'd be better to have you somewhere in this area. Go. Maybe on the other side. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, but you. this is... But mm -hmm. this is cool too. I know. Uh, Work. She's with me in heart. With in heart. Well, that's yeah. that's beautiful. She's with me always. That is. I'm just touched. You know, technically, when you get married, two become one. So she's already here. Technically, <laughs> if you think about it. In Illinois, you probably vote twice too, because you know each of you votes twice. This is Illinois. Jokes somebody, on you. I don't vote. <laughs> somebody made this joke about <laughs> Illinois too. They said they said uh, that their their father their grandfather was a lifelong Republican, and now he's voting Democrat, and he would really be broken by that because he never would have done it when he was alive. Um, get it because he's voting now. Okay. I'm sorry, I was just right, distracted fine. by Elaine saying subtitle is on, which is funny because that's something you have to do on your phone, Elaine, or wherever you're watching this. We Wait, don't are have we, subtitles. I would love it if we were subtitled in Tagalog right now. Manganang, yes. Manganang, uh, Gabi. Uh, Gabi. Yeah, that's all all hobo bae. Yes. Habu, For, habu, yeah. habu Baba. Habu Baba. <laughs> habu Baba. <laughs> All right, so tonight we are um, going to stretch some material thin. Praise the Lord. Um, I think, you know, I think Josh bailed on this one. He's like, you know what, this is we not... We can do your highs and lows first, right? Oh, yeah, we can do our highs and lows. All right, so we'll start with this. We'll start with you, Nathan, the outsider of the family here. Although technically, because of the age difference, he could literally be our son. We should have put him in the middle. We could have been a cute family. We I know, oh, it's our little... It's our. Gosh, this is This is Hunter. He got a haircut and grew a beard. <laughs> Um, enough like us i think we you know we could fit it, it. we yeah, could fit yeah, into the family all right all right there you go so nathan smith um <laughs> nathan smith what was your what was your highs and lows for this week like what was the high point of your week what was kind of the what was kind of the struggle you had to face um i would say the high point of my week was definitely food pantry yesterday it was really cool kind of coming out and getting a chance to be a part of a mobile food pantry that was the first mobile food pantry i've been a part of and uh 
Yeah, we just had we had so many people that came out yesterday, including like you know cops and people from Belvedere, police officers from Belvedere helping us out, and yeah, it was it was incredible. You know, how many families did we reach yesterday? One hundred ninety one, according to their count. One hundred ninety one so, yeah, families. There was after they left. I think we did about one ninety five because there was a few after they left. So yeah. yeah. We're still reaching a crazy amount of families. Oh my gosh! During right? this quarantine, the whole county so, just you know, shows up, man. <laughs> honestly, I think we're reaching more now, family-wise, in the food pantry than we were before, right? For so, sure. yeah, um, yeah, it's just incredible to see that. I would say the low of my week. I wouldn't say it's a low, because but it was more of like uh, a uh, I started back work at Starbucks, and it's not that it's bad working at Starbucks, but man, it is busy. Like literally, everyone got word that Starbucks was open, and <laughs> luckily they've now you're getting patient. even another word that Starbucks right. is open. <laughs> and man, uh, it was it was very insane. Let's just say that. So, were people patient and kind with you? Would you say no? People no, are not. not so They're much. like, give me my coffee now. <laughs> no, no. They said after the pandemic that they've learned their ways, so they've got to be they've got to be patient and kind because everybody said this is a new world. We have an awakening. We're going to be patient and I kind. I would say probably <laughs> they haven't gotten that lesson yet. <laughs> Maybe after a couple cups of coffee, they'd be like, hey, we actually like you guys. But, uh, you know, for now, you know, we have a lot of rude people. We have a mix of people, actually, I would say, though, you know, because there's some some good people there. Yeah, too, if so. you guys watching have a good experience or a struggle you went through this week, go ahead and throw it up there. Say, yes. this week I got to and just put that in there because yeah. we'd like your participation and your yes. stories. I miss having you guys here, right? Yeah. Tell us uh, your highs and lows. We would love to know. Everybody yeah. type, in, type in the comment box what your highs and lows for the week are. Yeah. Now, what was your highs and lows for the week? Oh, yeah, the mobile pantry, I would say, was the high. That was amazing. The Belvedere Police Department. Um, when was the last time the pantry wasn't your high of the week, though? Well, because I do a lot of pantry. <laughs> I mean, even a mobile pantry, I still put in a lot of a lot of work. We're talking about Sabbath, so I won't tell you how many how long I put in. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. So watching the police right. officer serve, that was amazing. I loved that the school superintendent said we could use the lot. The Belvedere Police Department um, stepped up to serve. Our yeah. people served. So people that wouldn't normally necessarily interact, maybe we would, maybe we wouldn't. You know, we all came together to serve the community, you know, a common goal to serve the community. And I think that that's amazing. That just doesn't happen enough, you know. In the, in, mm -hmm. in the olden times, you know, we would have depended more on each other. Now we depend on Walmart or whatever. And these are Wait, the Wait, just out of where, curiosity, what do you consider olden times? Uh, when you were born. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. I didn't say it. This oh, time. no, but I mean, it used to be before like superstores. Wait, and things you, left like the, that. you left the dagger right there. A just little bit of us. <laughs> you know, one person did one thing, one person did another. But yeah. anyway, it kind of reminds me of that kind of cooperative spirit when um, agencies come together to help one another. So we appreciated them not only sponsoring the pantry, but also working the pantry. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if I really have a low. I guess I guess my low would be that a lot of people I love are suffering right now, mm, just just yeah. going through a lot. I mean, it, it hurts my heart. You know, I have the opportunity to come in the sanctuary and you know pray or have quiet time and pray, and 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 that's amazing. But I yeah. I, I I feel the pain for my you know people in my life that I love that are suffering. Cheryl had Mexican food Monday night and then a really sad salad for lunch as a low. So the Mexican food. Listen, we learned that El Mocajete will deliver for free on yes. orders over $20. And I think at that moment, the clouds happened to part and a ray of sunshine fell on my face. And I felt what it was like to be alive again. As I said, I will take your nachos with the jalapenos on them. And Kristen's like, don't you have to do stuff tonight? And I'm like, I don't care. I'm eating the jalapenos. <laughs> She's like, you're going to be up all night. And she has to listen to me complain, right? And then has to say to me over and over again, I told you not to do that. Yeah, and true. if that stopped me, well, we'd, we'd have different lives by now. I still have that. yet to eat El Mocajente. And everyone keeps telling me that's like oh, the best you, Mexican. Yeah, I have failed and, as a You know, pastor. it's also, you know, Rachel absolutely loves Mexican food. So oh, my gosh. you would think we would have had it by now. We just. I tried the other day. I tried to get you some. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean it's okay. I honestly shouldn't be eating. But you've all had that. sushi like six times yeah, since you've been here. No healthy for you. No though. Mexican. You can have healthy Mexican food. Just so you've had Japanese six times, Mexican zero. Which yeah. is funny because in our population here we have thirty percent Hispanic and like zero percent Japanese. <laughs> so you would think it'd Not be the zero. other way around. Oh uh, you no. Or anyway, move on. I will check the <laughs> census data to see if there's one Japanese person there living is. in Bunker. He was Japanese. Oh wow. All right, she wins. Well, I said not zero. She wins. There you go. I tell you what, she just comes out here to show me up. I tell you what. I can't help it. Um, so my highs and lows. Thanks for asking. How are you? Um, yeah, yeah thanks, Gal. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. you're interested in me. I feel special. Um, <laughs> 
You know, side note, also, I just want, I know I'm going to cut you off for a second, but I think it's funny that this is... But enough about me. Let's get, talk about you. Don't get you. to see. This is not coffee. This is a Diet Coke. That is, that is a Diet Coke. So it's yes. deceiving. I see the bubbles, and I was like, that's Wait, not coffee. was it coffee when you walked by? Because you said it was coffee. I may have had a cup of coffee, drank it down, then put some Diet Coke in that oh, for, the, okay. nice. for the thing that's actually... Or mixed actually, coffee oh. and Diet Coke. Should I tell him why I know I was in the cup? I, I may have been hiding around the corner in the closet, <laughs> and I jumped out and me. scared him, and he's like, I'm holding coffee. <laughs> I'm walking in the church. This is my life. I'm walking in the church just trying to come by and do this broadcast to bring us together as a family. Which is and my high. wife is hiding in a closet to jump out at me. And that's your life. That's, oh my God. <laughs> that's what keeps things going. I'm just saying, <laughs> you can't jump out and scare your spouse. What is life? I'm saying. So, um... I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a ha ha there. Give us a couple ha ha's. The reactions will help to get the video seen. Yeah. And you know we want people to see it. We want them to join in. We want to expand our family even in times like these. So my high this week. What would you say my high's been? Uh, maybe the pantry with us. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I'll stop it. Oh my um, gosh. No. Well, the funny about the funny thing about the pantry was um, I was completely useless for most of it because we had so many volunteers. Yeah. yeah. There was like a lot I mean, there them. were you couldn't throw a rock without hitting a cop, and when you did throw a rock and hit a cop, they got a little irritated. I'll be yeah, honest. I, a little bit. I expected a little kindness out of you know cops when they're getting rocks thrown at them, but you know they should expect it on their job. <laughs> no. Um, oh my goodness. I don't know. I, you know, I've had. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say this. The highs of my week have actually been the people that have encouraged me about the Isaiah Bible study because getting up at 4:30, while I usually like getting up, like if you don't tell me to get up early and I get up early, I'm happy. <laughs> if you make me get up early, I'm like, ah, oh, this is terrible, right? Even though I would normally be up that time, you know, most of the time anyway. But um, Cheryl's telling you to stop touching your face. We'll put gloves on <laughs> Sorry, yeah, she's gonna. We'll put oven mitts. I'm getting the straight jacket. Yeah, I'll have oven so mitts. Like lobster I'm gonna get the cone. I'm gonna get the cone on the head. You know, can't <laughs> touch anything. My face itches. I have a beard, so I have to touch my yeah, face. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry about touching my face. Um. Anywho, so no, I think the high would actually be some of the encouragement that people have given me on some of that. It's it's been a lot of work um, since we've gone into quarantine, getting a lot of this through. And one of my highs, honestly, today we had a meeting with pastors, uh, and we were kind of talking um, strategy, battle plans, things that are going on. Who's going to defy the law and open up their church? And which one of you guys are just going to lay down and let the law man, you know, run over you? Um, I won't say who fell on what part or even what pastors were involved. I was there. Um, <laughs> So, and uh, my low point, and this is this has honestly been my low point every day, is Sunday morning at 12.15. Because mm -hmm. I'm here, and I'm watching the broadcast, and I come out in an empty sanctuary and just cry for a little bit. And that's just, you know, I know that sounds, you know, but at the same point, I use that time to kind of weep for what our country is going through and, and what our people are going through. And I use it to kind of pray for our church, that the Lord's holding us together. That he's you know going to bring good out of this um but it is it is it, it breaks my heart to be in an empty sanctuary on a sunday morning hmm. um so there you go uh, yeah, like i'm very encouraging today so it's it's it been, all encouraging right before that I yeah like, i know right to that point i'm like hey let's bring it down my contribution was popping out of the closet like, you know, oh, you know, okay yeah this is an important thing people i, I don't know why this is my Facebook does not have the care emoji on it, and my computer doesn't have it on there either. I don't think my computer. Oh, now you're just showing off. <laughs> I can't even. I can't hit the care button. If you can hit a care button, hit the care button right now. I don't have a care button. What is the See? care button? No. Yeah, he don't have it either. Do you have it? No. Uh -huh. wow. Kristen doesn't have it either. Wow. No care button. No I care button. This is why over. iPhones are better. So. No, that is crazy. <laughs> anyway. Listen, let's let's do some Bible study if it's it. okay you know, with you guys. We're right on time. We still got one minute to goof off. We're right. We got one more minute to goof off because, as you know, and I just touched my face. Great. Now I'm aware of it. Um, <laughs> um, what we're talking tonight about, and I will say this. I told Kristen the title of the letter. She, she already studied it. And I said, so the lesson is on taking a Sabbath. She said, yep. I said, well, I guess I'll lead it. And she says, you will burst into flame. <laughs> she said, you will just catch on fire. Nice. And Angie doesn't have a care button either. Wait, Angie, does that mean you don't give a care? What does a care look like? I can't give a care. I don't have a care to give. Look, it's he's holding a heart. Aw. If anyone can solve the mystery of what the care button means, please, by all is means. It means bless updated? your heart. Is your Facebook updated? Right. Does it mean bless Before your heart? People were messing with me. I think it means bless your heart. Didn't then they come out and say that their new emoji was called bless your heart? Is, is that it? what it is? I thought is that so. a, that'd be a southern emoji then. 
That's right. Well, bless your heart. Yeah, but when Southerners well, yeah. say it, they're not being nice. Look at look at all that. Are you doing that, Nathan? I am totally doing that on purpose. Oh, you people with oh, your care buttons. Else has oh, who just sent that? <laughs> who sent the care button? We didn't see that. Hit it one more time. Just Angie, once. I, Angie, I care so much. You care so much. <laughs> Hit the care button one you more too, time. Angie. Who was that? We gotta get there's a little bit of a delay here, so we gotta wait. You watch and see who that was. I got you. Meanwhile, I will talk about the importance of taking a Sabbath. It is so important that I probably violate this commandment on a regular basis. Cheryl. Cheryl. Cheryl's got I a bless care button. Everyone's heart. Nice she is Cheryl. blessing. Yeah. Yes. Nice Angie, Angie, yes, but you have to manually bless mm -hmm. people's heart instead of pushing a button that says you bless their heart. Yeah. You, you played yourself. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna monitor the phone and so anyways, I'm gonna go Sabbath. on to the list. Back so to Sabbath. <laughs> back to the Sabbath. Let's talk about how great you guys are at keeping a Sabbath, about not feeling stressed, about not um, not forgetting to do that. So let's start. Do you have the Ten Commandments in there? Do I have the Ten Commandments? You have the yeah. Ten Commandments in there somewhere. The Ten. Wait, before you do this, name the commandments. Go, Nate. Well, they used to hang on the wall. Uh, honor your father. Oh, I know they're not back there anymore, are they? I know. <laughs> they're, in a, they're, we, they're still so here. We just moved them. Commandments? Yeah. I know. Honor your father and mother. You've love already skipped. You've already skipped. Love the Lord God with all your there. heart. Uh, there will be another gods before you. There have no other gods before you. Yeah. No, there well, that's what I meant. Nancy. <laughs> there will be no other gods before you is what I meant. Dang, man. I feel like I should yeah, definitely right know this. Okay. Yeah. It's all right. It's hard when you're on the spot, even though we all know it. So, so how many did you get? Three. I, 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 you got three commandments. You shout okay. out murder. Yeah, that's that's probably. Do you want me to try? One. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So I am cut, I can't I am the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thyself an engraven image. There it is. Yeah. Oh, number three. What happened? Number three. You're an easy one. I give you that my dad does it a lot. <laughs> no, you'll not take the name of your Lord in vain. Oh, dang. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to bail him out. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet. All right. Now, of those commandments, and, and we're talking right up there with don't murder and don't steal, God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So why do you think, why do you guys think it's so important that God says, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy? Why put that like in your top 10? Because let's be honest, if you were going to say the top 10 sins I would, I have, am capable of committing, right? I, I hope I'm not capable of murder, but man, if I was, <laughs> that would be like my top sin. In fact, I would say if my life were mostly really righteous and I was serving people and doing everything right, but once a week I murdered somebody... Um, that you would probably still not think I was a good person, right? You can't be a good person and, and murder somebody once a week. What about lying? What if you told one great big lie every week, right? And, and no one knows, you're just going through, right? So that obviously that's a bad one, right? Yeah. What are the other ones there? Honor your father and mother. What if you hate your parents? Um, you know what I'm saying? What if hate you- Hate is murder, so. Yeah, you're right, hate is murder, murder, right? So you got murder and, you got, and you're not honoring your parents. Say your parents are living in abject poverty and filth and you have the ability to help them, but you don't, because you just don't, you know, you, right? So would you say, well, that person's a good person, right? Well, no, you'd say, what if somebody's constantly taking the Lord's name in vain, right? Are you like, wow, that's a person whose life I want to emulate. But then we get to this one. Why is this in the top 10? Because God is the source. And if you're not going back to the source, then the whole idea is you gain from God your source and then mm -hmm. you pour out. If you're not gaining anything, you can't pour out. It's the old, uh, you know, you can't pour out of an empty pitcher, you know. Um, yeah, if you're not going back to him, if you're not prioritizing him, it's supposed to be God above all things. And the commandments are there not to, like, they're not just an arbitrary list of rules. They're, again, meant to keep you in the boundaries of serving him first. Yeah. Yeah. What did Cheryl say there? Uh, they're just talking about the emoji. Okay. Basically. All right. So um, what do you think? You know, I think about the, I think the reason why another reason, I, that's a, I would totally agree with you, Crystal, on that one. But also I think another reason is just taking a step back and resting mm -hmm. allows you to get the rest and peace you need before you step on to the rest of your work days, you know? So like, you know, I'm typically more irritable, angry, you know, and all that kind of emotions and tend to lash out more when I'm tired. So I think the Lord some, says sometimes, hey, it's time to take a step back rest your body and get a complete rest before you step into your work day you know so you know it's the whole idea of halt that everyone always talks about but what's interesting so. though is but so here's my question though but how would you consider somebody a good person who didn't keep the sabbath 
we usually consider people who don't keep the Sabbath better people because those are the people that are serving more. Yeah. I think that's where it becomes a little bit tricky because if you're doing good things, like if somebody, I don't know, I don't, if they're doing something for your own means, like something recreational, like maybe you would judge them on that. Although probably, probably no one would even notice. But if somebody's doing something to serve the Lord, if you're doing something for, you know, uh, giving purposes, you consider them a better person for not keeping the Sabbath. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I'm just going to, I may step on some toes, but if you call your pastor and he doesn't answer, you know, I know, I mean, yeah. Oh, well, I'll just say, if you call your pastor and he doesn't answer, like, people get upset. Why yeah. is the pastor not answering me? But, like, because because he's <laughs> supposed to take a rest, but no one ever, like, wants that person. If they call yeah. him even, you know, like, his, his day is supposed to be Monday, but when people call him on a Monday, they expect him to answer. So I think, and even people who aren't pastors, like, if you're out there and you're doing giving things, we consider that. We consider you a better person the more generous deeds you do even if you're not taking a Sabbath. Yeah. Okay. And let's let's do this then too. Let's define Sabbath. So when you say take a Sabbath, start with you, Nate. What do you mean by what do you mean by I'm taking you know, this is my Sabbath day? You know, growing up, how I learned Sabbath Sabbath is basically taking a step away from anything that is work, manual work. Uh, basically not going out is what they another one was like not going out where someone will serve you so kind of just like staying or you know you know typically a sabbath would be sunday so going to church but then like hang out with family or going home you know mm -hmm. so that's typically what i learned growing up a sabbath so pay hey, uk well, he defines it in the book. It says, the word Sabbath comes from the Hebrew word that means to cease or to stop working. And what I liked in the book um, that he talks about is it's not just, okay, I'm just going to I'm just gonna sit here for a time. I'm just going to make sure that I'm not doing something. But it's actually prioritizing a time in your week that it's set aside for rest in the Lord. Not just rest, not just couch potatoing it, but it's purposely setting it aside. Like, I am dedicating this to the Lord. Kind of similar what you do with your money with tithe. It's like mm -hmm. you're taking that part and you're setting your mind to setting it aside. It's not just happening. It's not just if nobody calls me or my favorite show's not on, but it's purposely, intentionally choosing to rest and seek Jesus, yeah. you know, in the Sabbath. And I like that about it because I just, I mean, I know that, I've heard that, you know, like I know that intellectually, but I had never really thought about it that way before. So, and this is going to be an interesting question because of where we're all at in our lives, but on a scale of one to 10 and type this in the comments there, how busy are you? Like over the course of a week on a scale of one to 10. Pre-quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I'll even give you, a, I'll give you a pre-quarantine slash now, right? So pre-quarantine, how busy were you? I would say pre-quarantine, I was probably on an eight or a nine. You know, I didn't really have any day that I could just sit down and do nothing. It was, it and so was where are you? Busy. Well, where are you now that you're Now, uh, well, Starbucks started up again. So, so I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say I'm a nine yet because we're still, you know, held right. back. But, you know, at the same time. I'd probably say maybe seven, eight, maybe. Wow. But still, I mean, I would say it was pretty, well, I'm pretty busy. I usually have something to do, you know? Yeah. Uh, what about you, Kay? Scale of um, one to 10. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually busy. Like any time that I have that's, you know, blank, I usually fill it in with, well, there's something I could do at the pantry or there's something I can do around the house or whatever. I'm not good at sitting still, so. Yeah. Uh, I'd say I was about a four before, and I'm probably about a six now. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> no, I was, I, we're, I was a little confused. Yeah, I was like, hold on, then I want to change my numbers fine, because I know because, you work way more than I yeah, do. Yeah, you know. Um, being yeah, a pastor is a lot of work. No, it is. Well, my pastor. joke is, is being a pastor, the good thing is you get to choose your hours. The bad thing is you got to choose 80 of them, right? <laughs> um, so there's a, there's a good and a bad there because you do get the time off, you know, when you need it, but you actually do have to purposely take the time off. Um, now, the funny thing is somebody asked me if I would work as hard as I worked if I didn't live right next to the church, <laughs> right? Which is funny because the last place we lived, actually, the church was 20 minutes away. Um, I was on staff okay. there, but... Yeah, I would, I would still go in there and, you yeah. know, and, and kind of get behind it. Because to me, I'll be honest, sometimes when I'm sitting at the house, I feel like, well, sitting here isn't really accomplishing anything. And, and um, I guess two summers ago, no, I guess it was last, no, it was two summers ago, I purposely bought a hammock because I wanted something where I go oh, out. I bought the hammock. Okay, Don't take well, the credit for the hammock. She bought... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, that's why I can't have her on here. I mean, right? you bought the, uh, what was the canoe? So you could save the canoe. I that's bought the true. kayak. There you yeah, go. Hey, hey, I saved you. Perfect. <laughs> um, I'll be honest, though. The Kishwaukee can be a little work sometimes. That river won't push you. I mean, you got to work on that. river's all like, no, nah, we're not going anywhere. Come on, river. Get on it, man. But it's easier would you say that's a Sabbath, though? Like, would you say, like, canoeing, if you were, it's relaxing? Yeah. Um, actually, you know what? Um, in the summer, it's easier for me to do stuff like that, right? Because if you can have a, a Monday is usually my day off. And if it's nice and warm, I swear last year it rained every Monday. Like it would be 75 and sunny on Sunday. And I'd be like, man, I can't wait till tomorrow. And then rain has fallen out of the sky. Um, it rained and snowed at our first couple of pantry distributions, though. So I can't really say that. It was literally rain snow. I'm like, oh, what horrible. state is this? Rain what? snow. Rain it's snow. Spring. Yeah, it's like it doesn't even know what Welcome to do. Welcome to Illinois. You know? Welcome to Illinois. Um, so yeah, doing stuff like that, and, and in particular because it's not something where your mind is constantly occupied. Yeah. Um, I will admit that because we have phones and things like that, that my mind can get a little constantly occupied from time to time because there's always something to distract. There's always right. something else, right? Like I could be Googling whether or not wombats have pouches, right? And here I am just sitting here like a like a sucker. Back when I grew up, you could be wrong in an argument and no one would ever know right we had guys on the or being in the navy there were guys on the boat there was this one guy i remember he was just known for lying and everything you asked was just a complete fabrication but you had no google to back up and to say hey you're absolutely wrong about this what we got angie said the squirrels enjoy the, the squirrels hand. okay so those oh, also of you, cheryl said i'm i'm ready for the shelter in place sabbath to be over yeah this is kind of an imposed sabbath right yeah. um i think too Hopefully, a lot of people are realizing there's a lot of stuff that they were busy with before Sabbath, before all of this, that when they get back, that maybe they don't need as many of those activities in their life, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Americans, in, in particular, uh, could definitely be accused of having a lot of activities. And the thing about it is, is being active doesn't always mean you're being productive. It yeah. just means you're active. Yeah. And for some of us, man, there's some people, we don't want to be alone with our thoughts, mm -hmm. right? We don't want to sit there and let that stuff stir in our heads. Yep. So we'll go do whatever we got to do. We'll go put in a few more hours of work. We'll go do this. We'll go do that in order to do it. I haven't decided, by the way, if pickleball is a Sabbath thing or for me or not. Um, is it relaxing? But then again, I've actually seen you play and you're very competitive. So it, here's my problem. Here's my problem. And I played this because, okay, so we played some rogue pickleball the other day. And what I realized, when I say rogue, I mean somebody literally had some back alley you know made a net out of pvc pipe and we all snuck in the back of a middle school parking lot to play some pickleball so the fuzz didn't bust us right so but what i've noticed <laughs> about the it weirdest sentence i've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> right but here's the funny thing about it what i realized was i liked the three guys that i was playing with and i don't like that because i don't like mm. friendly games I want a game where everyone is trying their best to beat me, right? Like I want, I want their best coming at me, right. and I want to give the best back. You played basketball. I'm with very me. much of a competitive. You know, too. right? You are too. Yeah, right? We won't talk about the blemish in my basketball history of last week, which, which you happened was, to bring up on camera. Yeah, which it happened. <laughs> Isn't true. Okay, it's right. true. But what it's was not that true. final score? I was, it was like 24 20. We were 20. only behind like two yeah, points. We, it wasn't anyway. that bad. Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> so here are signs that you have too much activity in your life. Are you ready? We'll start with you. I'll say one and then you address it. Then I'll say the next one, you address it. <laughs> Which is funny. So, you feel stressed daily. This is actually from a ministry site for missionaries. It says, why do they struggle with stress? And really, most of us enter um, ministry with high expectations. We expect to save lives, rescue, make a difference. In fact, this isn't really our job. There's something more important, um, and that's living as a child of God. God has called us into his work because he loves us and want to be part of his Father's work. He doesn't call us to ministry because he demands that we give ourselves to save the world. That's his job. Mm. How do you feel about that? I'm sorry, I was reading some comments. Oh, oh. <laughs> like, well, what, were the, what were the comments? Oh, then? just basically that Angie said that you turned pickleball into evangelism, is what she did. <laughs> and then she corrected herself by saying evangelism. Okay. But I just thought that was funny. I yes. don't know what evangelism is. You know what? Everything you do is evangelism if you're a child of God. Everything, sure. right? Because yes. when, you're living, when you're living before people as a child of God, it's as part of your life. So this is talking about um, one of the reasons you may in ministry, this is actually particularly ministry, but we'll say that you feel stressed daily. Um, and by that, she's talking about how sometimes you're out in the world and you feel like it's your job to save the world. And if you're not saving the world, you're letting the world down, right? That, you know, I would say that's even, that's more, a little bit more than just ministry too. Cause we all, again, you just called, we're all called to evangelize, right? So we should all feel the pressure that the, the feel and the tug to go and be the light in places and sometimes that can get exhausting 
you know, talking to the person that's a complete jerk to you, but still laugh or smiling and or loving them anyways, right? So mm -hmm. that I would say, and showing Jesus. So it's the same thing, I would say, yeah. yeah. I totally agree, yeah. So, and these are totally, this literally is totally random, but it says you may be too busy if you are often irritated with your family. I, I wouldn't say I get irritated with my family a lot. The only time I really ever, well, I'm a good. <laughs> the only time I really ever get irritated with my family is when I feel like I can't get it all done. Like if I put in mm. too many hours and I come home and there's like dishes in the sink, because if you know me, if you know me for about five seconds, you know if my house is messy, I'm not a happy camper. So I'm just a tidy person. So if I come home and I don't feel like I have the energy to give to it and I'm looking at a family that's like, you know, playing video games or whatever, then I'm like, what, what, what is this? That then I can tend to get a little bit irritated, but. This one says, if you feel better about yourself when you're busy with ministry or work. Oh, I feel like. So feel like how would that, how would that be an indication that you're too busy, that you feel better when you're busy with ministry or Wait, work? but you're supposed to feel better about yourself when you're busy with ministry. Well, here's what they said. This is a red flag and something that she struggled with. As missionaries, we end up finding worshiping our ministry rather than worshiping God. Yeah. Well, when we well, stop well. doing ministry, we feel like we have nowhere to go. Our value diminishes. So if I'm not doing something for God right now, I'm not a good person or I'm not what I'm supposed to be. And all of a sudden you just feel lost. Like you don't have a work or a job or something to do right yeah. now. All of a sudden you feel lost. That's a sign that you might be too busy, that you've lost that ability to not do. You know, yeah. you have to have the ability to turn off, right? You have to have the ability to, to, to set aside and say, you know, and we don't. We don't talk about this in, um, especially Pentecostal circles. We're not big on quiet, contemplative worship, but there is something to say. being able. I know, right? But there is something to being able to be quiet before the Lord, yeah. right, and to have that quiet time with God. But it goes back to like, are you doing it with God? Like, you can do things for God; they can be good deeds. But if you're not going back to the source. Like, yeah. if you're not being refilled by him, then it doesn't matter. Like, what's the difference between you and somebody that doesn't know him and is just out there serving in a social service organization or whatever? Like, your good works don't save you. Mm -hmm. um, right. And this says, too, here that even Jesus took time off, right? And if he yeah. took time off from ministry and he was literally saving the world, yeah. what makes you better than him? When he was facing the cross, like, what is what did he do when he knew he was going to face the cross? Like, you know, he went back to the Father. He went back to that quiet time before the greatest event in history was to take place. So the greatest figure in history before the greatest event in history, and he chose to go back to the Father and take that. Amen. And even I would say even after big moments in his ministry, he would go and rest. You know, I, I was remembering a story of uh, when um, they were in, the, I can't remember whose house it was, but they lowered the cripple man right. through mm -hmm. the roof. He was Four so surrounded friends. by so many people. It was a huge event in his ministry. The next day he literally gets up and leaves everybody behind and goes and rests on the mountain. Yeah, and that's literally. because something had been taken out of him. It, yeah. I think when we become irritated, when we know we're not taking a Sabbath, when we're doing these things like becoming irritated or whatever, is when something goes out of us and we put nothing back in. So yeah, if right. Jesus, like healing had gone out of him, ministry had gone out of him, had he not taken the time to go back and connect with the Father and rest his physical body and, and all that, you know. Okay, and I'm, I know I'm hanging myself with this, but here we go. <laughs> If you have someone in your life, like if you have kids or a husband or a wife or somebody like that, and say they're always doing something around the house and you're always cleaning up after them, it seems like you're always picking up after them, you're always fixing the mess, you're always, you know, they're doing something and then they come by with no concern for you and break it. And, and there's just a certain sort of weariness you get. Now, if you feel loved by that person, right, if you've spent time away from that, right, I'm saying this because I do love Krista deeply. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am sitting here. I know, us. I know. I am quiet as a mouse. I, I knew when this thing came into my head, and I feel like the Holy Spirit quickened it, that I'm going to go into some dangerous territory. So pray for me now. Saints intercede on my behalf. Man, I should have <laughs> sat in between. Um, <laughs> but no, so, so well, I've noticed this in our, because listen, Kristen, Kristen's level of clean and my level of clean are two different things. Mm -hmm. My level of clean is nothing is on the floor. Her level of clean is you could eat off the floor, right? And so there's there's always been a disparity, and I will I will be honest and say I've not always striven to come to her level of it, and that she has often had to, you know, cover the ground downwards more than I've covered the ground upwards. But what I've also noticed in our relationship, though, is that if I'm treating her well in other areas, 
right? If I'm, you know, if I'm bringing her home some food that's nice, or I get her little gifts here and there, and I'm speaking her love languages, or I'm doing things that she knows she needs done, if I'm like making the uncomfortable phone call she doesn't want to make, or something like that, then she's kind of okay with the other stuff. I got that subtlety there. But when I don't, <laughs> but when I don't do those yeah. other things, when I'm not pouring back into that relationship, when I'm not also bridging it in some way. Then all of a sudden, the things that normally she'd have no, you know, she's like, ah, it's just, you know, I love him, he loves me, but he's different. All yeah. of a sudden, that becomes an irritation. Yeah. All of a sudden, that becomes an area where, you know, um, Kristen will tell you, she says, if I know you love me, I'll run through a wall for you, right? But if I'm working my butt off, and then all of a sudden, I feel like you don't love, and you don't appreciate, and it doesn't matter, Yeah. all of a sudden, I become a different person, right? So here's the thing. You may be too busy if you've been in the same place for many years, meaning if you've been, when you stay in the same area and focus on the same kind of work for years on end, it's hard to see life from a different perspective. However, with our commitments and responsibilities, it's often good to take a step back and get a change of atmosphere. Um, but if we're willing to take a step back in God's timing, there are many love-filled lessons God wants us to teach in doing so. I will tell you this, when I get a chance, I try to go to other people's churches. If they're having like an off-night service or they're having a prayer meeting on a specific night, I like to do that because, you know, sometimes as a pastor, I like to go into a church and nothing is my job, yeah, yeah. right? Like you just walk in and you're like, hey, music is mixed a little, you know, off. Not my job. Hey, that light's out. Not my job. Hey, they, <laughs> greeting people at the door. Nice to be greeted. Not my job, right? Hey, you know, you know what I'm saying? There, there's just a thing about actually getting to be yeah. in church sometimes that you miss. Of course, now we all miss being in church because we got, we got like zero church. All right, here's one for you. Who, whose turn is it? I don't know. Just read it. Oh. We'll, we'll contribute. All right. we'll go forward. You feel like you're not growing spiritually. This is a red flag. If we're not growing spiritually when doing ministry work, then something's wrong. We spend our whole life stepping closer to the perfection God has called us to in eternity. But why is it the more work we do, the fewer steps we take? When we try to make things happen, we go dry. When we try to get numbers of believers and baptisms to report back, we go dry. When we stay in the same place for too long, doing the same work, we go dry. Sometimes I feel like God is calling us in order to do something in our lives to bring us a step closer to humility and love. Mm -hmm. So that's why, especially in ministry, you start getting focused on how many seats did I fill? How many views do I have mm -hmm. on there? How many people liked our post? How many people are engaged here? How many people we feed? What are our numbers, right? Um, that kind of thing can cause you to lose heart because let's be honest, there has to be some part of me that if only one person is here to preach to, then yeah. maybe God has called me to preach to that person. I am not saying I'm good with that. I am saying, though, that it is a possibility that God may call you to that, may call me to that, and that we still got to be faithful yeah. in that, right? Yeah, and I would say even outside of ministry as a whole, when you think about, you know, not growing spiritually, we— wherever you at you know whether you have a secular job or not you know you get so distracted throughout the week on the day to day yeah. you know so having that day to look back and examine and literally putting everything at rest and listening will allow the holy spirit to come in and say hey this era of your life you've allowed that to backslide or you're being stagnant stagnant in, right. and it's time to fix this so if you don't have those moments where you sit back and just say lord speak to me mm -hmm. i want to rest in your presence you, he can be speaking this entire time and you'll never hear him yeah. and this so. is yeah and here's an interesting thing so like in the in the business world there have been times where i was like man i don't like this job i want a better job or i know i should be you know at this level and i'm at this level and this company's never going to put me at this level so i need to move you know move on and do something different but what i found was if i'm so wrapped up in the eight to five right or yeah. whatever your work hours are that you get into this cycle of just getting things done yeah and if you don't intentionally step back and say okay i'm going to set aside a block of time just to make myself get to the next place right and spiritually we're talking about the same thing because sometimes in church you get into the habit you get into the ritual you get into the motions of it if you don't have a time that you specifically say okay lord now i'm just listening now i'm just you know i'm focused on what it is you want me to do that you're focused on god for the point of for mm -hmm. the sake of being with him mm -hmm. yeah right as opposed to doing work for him this is time i've set aside just to be with you mm -hmm. yeah um and then the last one, of course, you are often unwell due to minor illnesses. Nothing says you're too stressed, like constantly being sick from one more thing breaking down all the time. That's actually probably your body saying, chill out. And it's probably you saying, I'll show you who's boss, body. I will run you into the ground. I am stepping on the throttle, sick or not. I'm going to work my way through this. And then you stay sick for weeks instead of ever getting better. Questions, comments? Yeah. Any 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 comments there, Chris? Uh, Anything you'd like to 
Like well, I think it goes back to the how do you know how much is enough, like when you're doing good things. But right. it goes, I, that's why I liked in the book that he says set aside a weekly specific time. And that's not just your daily prayer time, but to refresh your body and spirit. Like he's saying, set aside a weekly specific time. Yeah. Don't just rest here and there, like so that your body comes to expect it. It's like if you've ever dieted and they tell you to like pick a day of the week that's your cheat day. So say like Sunday's your cheat day. Then your body knows, you know, six days I eat clean, seven days I cheat. Kind of that, kind of that, you know, the, the same idea with the Sabbath idea. Like not that you don't pray and you don't seek the Lord every day, but then your body comes to expect that, this is a day that's going to be restful. This is the day that I'm going to take yeah. off. And I would even say, you know, even if you're going along with the same idea of the cheat day and the idea of like dieting, you know, if you're doing that and you have that day, it's, a, it's something you can look forward to. Yeah. You know, so like throughout throughout the week, we can push ourselves harder and we can work harder. We can have a better mindset because we have the idea of, oh, on this day, I'm about to get in the Lord's presence and distract and get completely with uh, eliminate all distractions that way it can fill our my spiritual tanks back up my physical tanks back up right so. There you go. so in this day and age we have to factor in social media where does social media <laughs> fit with sabbath wow yeah. wow yeah. like i was gonna like you ever have that where yeah i'm just gonna sit down for a rest for a minute and all of a sudden ding yeah. the message ding right and immediately we are so conditioned that there's like an anxiety if yeah. we don't check the ding yeah. the ding could be anything the ding could be you know entered in a thousand dollar sweepstakes if you act now or the ding could be my mom's in the hospital come help yeah. right and and until you until you push the button right that phone didn't constantly demand that attention and you get that anxiety oh my gosh what could be on the other side of that ding yeah. So are we ever truly at rest if our minds are always occupied with social media? If we've got all these, you know, um, these vessels to take us to a different place to numb our mind, are we ever, like if you're trying to take a Sabbath, but you're, you know, reading about the coronavirus or you're, you know, oh, taking gosh. in all this media and all this stuff, are you really resting then? And then the, that, that would segue into the question of uh, the Ten Commandments are Ten Commandments. They're not Ten Requests. So when does the lack of Sabbath Become a sin. sin. Wow. Hmm. When is it? When are you actually not as good a person as you would be if you were taking a Sabbath? Yeah. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this, and some of you guys have had to deal with it. I can be a little irritable about about 14 Everybody or 15 hours into my day. <laughs> right about, right at that, I think right at that 13 hour mark into my day, I get a little, you know what I'm saying? But by, by, by about the 16th hour into the day, I get loopy. So there's a, there's a, you know, there's just this, this window. No, I kid. Um, let me ask you guys this. So, Nathan, you've been married one year. Yes. Chris and I have been married 25 years. Almost 25. We got married when we were both 16. Nice. Um, gosh, both you've 10. You've almost been married yes. as long as I've been alive. So. Right. Wow. We'll that. That's why there we should have put you in the middle, Nathan Smith. So, <laughs> Nathan Smith. A year, a year, a year into this, how mu how much time per day do you think it takes to maintain your connection with your spouse? I would say. 24 hours, you know, like I don't think well they can't be because you got to work yeah, and stuff like that oh, okay. okay, well if you're thinking it's about like it giving it a thousand percent. It's okay. mathematically impossible Well, I was thinking like 24 hours meaning like I guess if you go into marriage you always have to remember right. Every action right. and everything you're doing is to better your marriage, right? right. So okay. I don't okay. know if that's yeah, I thought you were given 200% yeah. But if like, you're you talking about 200%. if you physically me right. doing something for my wife, um, I would say it has to be at least an hour a day, you know, like I do something, I try at least, right? Right. To show Or well, you're intentionally trying to make connection. Yeah, to right? show yeah. To be an intentional. Let me let me ask you this and I'll and I'll turn over to Kristen here. But like how can you tell or have you had times when you sensed there wasn't a good connection between you? Because schedules, because things yeah. going on, because a lot of times they'll get news or they'll read something or, or we or you get something that makes you anxious or stressed or whatever, and the next time you talk to them you're carrying that over. Mm -hmm. Right? So how what are what are kind of some signs when you know you're there and then what do you do to correct it? Um I mean you could just kind of see in kind of like on Facial expressions, obviously, if you know someone well enough. Body just, language. Yeah, body yeah. language. Yeah. So you know if there's body something language. you need to talk about or something like that. Uh, obviously, girls are a little bit harder to read with that one. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I would say to, in order to fix that, it, honestly, it's just communication and just time. You know, like literally shutting everything off and just be like, okay, 
we're gonna have to talk. You know, we're right. gonna have to have that moment. I think that's just the key there. You, right. So you know, like I most of the time, you know, I'm spending it. We'll spend time together, but we're both on our phones or we're watching TV. Mm-hmm. But you know, to be intentional fixing something, it's gonna have to shut the TV off, shut the phones off, and be like look at each other and be like. Okay. Or maybe it's just time for a date night. You know, like there are literally, even during this thing, you know, if maybe if there's something, in, just as a random thing with your marriage you need help with, like Chili's is still open. Go pick up Chili's and sit oh, in the parking lot, right? Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Notice what you said. Like um, a marriage relationship always parallels the relationship with you have with the Lord. It just does. And you said like, um, you know, when you guys are missing each other, when you're not connecting, everything you said had to do with intentionally um, you're intentionally prioritizing your spouse yeah. and setting aside time. It's the same thing with the Sabbath. Like if you're missing the Lord, like he's not moving. Like it's, you know, it's you not setting aside that time, not yeah. prioritizing that. So it's the same well, thing. Well, and that's the thing. Yeah. So, okay. So, you know, like, um, Kristen has what was, I'm trying to think of how the joke goes. The joke says you could tell a lot about a woman's mood by her hands. If they're warm to the touch, she's probably in a peaceful, content place. If they're around your neck choking you, she may be upset about something, oh right? Like gosh. you can kind of tell a lot by a woman's hands um, and where they're at. But um, Kristen, I'll just I'll just say that she has a very obvious tell because I'm a hugger and there's a very specific way she kind of puts her hands in between me and the hug when I come in for it that says, hi stranger, haven't seen you all day, where you been? And that tells me there's a little, there's a little check engine light on, some something's going on, right? Yeah. And that's why I say how much time does it take because I would definitely say, especially in marriage, um, and 25 years is going to be different than a year in because I think in a year in you're still, um, you're still so, you know, you're still so you know, focused in on finding out who you guys, who each other is and who you are as a couple and what this means for the rest of your life and your destiny and yeah. how all that pans out. Um, to where, you know, Kristen and I, you're, you're a pastor and a pantry coordinator married, right? And and there's, there are days where we're ships passing in the night. She said the other day she came home and I looked at her and I was like, you've been gone all day, <laughs> right? Yeah, like, he didn't it's just, notice until it's the night. I came in because, at night and he's like, you've been gone all day. Didn't you leave this morning? I'm like, yes, I, I did. Because we just have that kind of schedule <laughs> sometimes, but yeah. then there has to be an intentionality to connect, right? Yeah. So like I said, a little check engine light comes on, something will happen. Um I, 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 I'm going to go and tell myself because I know what mine is. Mine is Kristen will do something and I'll get irritated about it for no reason. And that's really my way of saying, hey, I need your attention, honey. But what it actually comes out as is, I can't believe you did that. Or some, you know, just some little, it's a little barb or a little something. Just, you know, hey, you're not paying attention to me is what I'm trying to say. But what actually comes out is probably not as nice as that. But here's my other question, right? So if it takes that kind of intentional connection to stay in a committed married relationship with your spouse... How do you know when your check engine light is on with God? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all those ways. Well, I can tell you in the book, it says um, first stop, like stop and decide that you're going to take the Sabbath. And yeah. then he says intentionally rest, which I think that's probably the hardest one of all of these, like the intentional not doing anything, the intentional resting, like we talked about with social media, when the things are going off, everything's, you know, like, um, you know, your kids don't stop needing you because you're going to take a rest. You can't say like, I don't want to change this diaper right now, or I don't want to fix you dinner. I don't want to fix you lunch. And you know, Hey baby, would you stop crying for a second? I have a few things to do. I'll come back and meet your needs here in a second. Mm -hmm. And then the next one uh, he says is delight. Like, don't do it out of obligation. Don't be like, okay, like I'm going to take this time from, you know, 430 to 530 and I'm just going to grip my teeth and I'm going to get through it. But intentionally delight in it yeah. you know um intentionally starting out with worship um, learn how to enjoy stuff right yeah because if you're not enjoying it you're not going to want to stick with it and the whole idea is it's supposed to be rest it's supposed to be enjoyable it's not mm-hmm. supposed to be something that you you know grit your teeth and get through real, but real quick let me put this in there uh two things one if you have prayer requests go ahead and type them in we're gonna do prayer here in a second and two when you're talking about taking delight in things i thought about how about two months ago i had a donut and i had it because there was one last <laughs> Um, it was unglazed, right? So it was the plainest plain donut you could have. The boys didn't eat it because it's plain and there were frosted donuts. And oh so this thing, I, I know it's fate. It's fate is to sit on the kitchen counter until it goes so stale it's thrown away. So me being the altruistic hero that I am said, I'm going to eat this donut because otherwise somebody wasted their whole time on this. But here, right? I will tell you this, deciding <laughs> that that day I'm going to have this plain as could be donut. I took my time eating that. 
right? Yeah. I took delight in it. I like had a moment with this donut, right? <laughs> I wouldn't. I'd want some frosting. Well, you know, you, but that, to me, you know, it was like the sweetest thing I've had in two years, right? But it's the same way like when you talk about hammocks or kayaks or sitting out on your porch. I like to say that on Fridays in the summer when it gets warm, I make my back porch the office, that I put the laptop out there so I still take appointments. People come in. I make phone mm -hmm. calls, but we all do it there on the back porch. So I have those moments where everything's quiet and the squirrels are trying to steal peanuts and just, yeah. you know, having, having that kind of just being out there letting the Lord speak to your soul kind of pour into you just have those moments where the Holy Spirit can just pour back into you go ahead yeah the last one on here was contemplate so it would be stop so um, like this the Sabbath word meaning to stop and so it says you stop um, you uh, go to the throne instead of like running for the world to validate you rest once you stop you rest from your doings or your work delight to show show that you can enjoy what you've been given and i think that's a big one because we're so busy pursuing what we should be given next like god give me this if i could get the next you know um thing in my job or whatever you're pursuing that we forget to thank him for what we already have and the last yeah. one is contemplate um so we seek to see the invisible be made visible so um whatever he's speaking to you when you're doing the stop rest delight then it's time to contemplate that yeah, and we don't take enough time to contemplate i mean how many times are we yeah. blessed how many times are we i mean think about the amazing things that have happened i mean if we didn't take time to say thank you for the pantry or think about the amazing like we do the um end of the year video um where we do the compilation of that that's us contemplating all the lord has yeah. blessed us with in the right. year we really should be doing a daily or at least weekly contemplation of you know what the lord is doing in our church in our family in our lives i think that will that brings more joy than anything really because yeah. all we hear is covid and you know just all the all the bad news you know trump is this or you know whoever you support is this or that and the government is doing this and you get you take in so much negative especially from social media if you don't take the time to contemplate what the lord is doing and if you don't know what he's doing then you're not taking a sabbath so let me do let me do this for you let me let me ask you there at home to do this god is your father and let's say as a proud father he's talking to one of the angels and he pulls out his wallet i don't know why god has a wallet i don't know what he'd need to buy but let's say god's got a wallet and there's a picture of you this week in it where are the moments where god says that's my kid i love that one mm -hmm. Right. Like I can just picture different moments during the week. And, it, and I'm going to be out they, they weren't the moments where I'm working the pantry or even preaching a message. They were the moments when I was just in here early in the morning. And it's just me and him talking. And I'm like, God, I got like six minutes before I got to go on. And I just want, you know, like, like, and it's just, you know, and, but there's times of rest and things yeah. like that where God just kind of pours back. Just imagine this, that he's got, he's got his little snapshots of your life, right? Of the things you've done this week where he spent time with you and where he's proud of you and where he says this is my child right yeah. mm -hmm. so you guys do you guys got one for that yeah we got, we got well i mean uh yeah i mean just to agree with that you were you know, agreeing yeah, you get were a chance to kind of like you know yeah has spent a time i was just dwelling on the thought you were you know I, I, of what you were saying Kristen, of the idea of just sitting back and just getting a chance to watch and see what god is actually doing i remember there was times in my life where i felt like god wasn't moving the reality god was still moving in my life i just wasn't stopping to watch mm -hmm. you know like literally you know god is constantly doing good and so many times i can feel so bitter it's because my bitterness is in the fact that i'm just so busy and i'm just going to drown myself and work even more you know are you ready for so. this because I, I that brings up what i had I, and we're almost out of you know running out of time here but I put down, do we expect God to conform to our idea of what our relationship with him should be? Yeah. We do, especially this day and age. We live yeah. in the fast food French fry culture. We really do. We live in the Facebook. How many times has your Facebook taken a couple extra minutes? Like, like, okay, in this time of quarantine, when everybody's on the internet, how long has your Facebook taken to upload? Or I was trying to, I'm trying to buy Garrison sneakers and it was taking forever for the page to load. And I was getting frustrated last night. Well, you bought them? No, I didn't yet. I was, okay, just, I was good, just looking. Good. I didn't, I didn't buy without it. I got to show you which ones to buy. I got. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Um, but uh, yeah, so the internet takes a couple minutes or whatever. Like we've gotten so impatient and we're that yeah. same way with God. Like we're giving, you know, God, okay, you know, I'll, I'll give you a I'll give you a couple minutes, God, but you know, you gotta, you gotta get this quick. There better be some, I better get goosebumps because if I don't get that right away, then, you know, obviously I'm not feeling your Holy Spirit here, but it, it's, it, you know, and it doesn't work that way with God. Right. You just, you can't do that. He's not, that's not that way. He's always loving you. You're always in the picture in his wallet, but it's not like you just pull up to the drive through yeah. and okay, God, I want a healing and I want, you know, I want some goosebumps now, uh, throw on some hill song. And, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not that Oceans? way. It's like, has anybody seen that funny video, the, you know, with the funny Karen and whatever? 
I, I, I really do. I know that was a joke and everything, but I really do feel Wait, like the, uh, they, nobody yeah, saw the drive through where they're talking about the quarantine. You have to look it up. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what I it's called. Find it. Oh, the drive through church. The drive through church. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I posted uh, that's I actually on my timeline. You, you can go down thing. there. Yeah. But I mean, I know that that was a parody, but we really do do that with God. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're like, okay, well, if you can fit between, you know, Facebook and my favorite show, then, you know, okay, I'll give you some glory, but I better, I better be feeling it, you know? Yeah. Well, let me ask, and here's the question you got to ask yourself. What, what does God expect out of you in your relationship with him? Yeah. Right. Like, like you, not, not you, like, you know, you, the church or you universal, but you personally, there's something personally where God, you know, kind of pricks at your heart or the Holy Spirit kind of moves you in a certain way. And you know, that's where he wants time or relationship with you. What is that thing? Now, if you don't know that thing or you don't have that thing, then I would say there's where you start. Mm-hmm. Right. Lord, what did it, you know, what, not, not what is it, you know, you can do for me, God, mm-hmm. but what is it, Lord, that you want for you and I to grow closer together for me to know you more, for me to be more intimate with you, God, how, you know, what is it that I need to do to get to that place? Right. Mm-hmm. Cause I think we do kind of expect him, you know, um, like Chuck Swindoll said, you'll know how good you are at being a servant when someone treats you like one. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause we're talking about, I'm a great servant. And somebody treats you like a servant. You're like, no, you didn't. Right. I can't do the, <laughs> Yeah, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I, you know what? I was raised in the Church of God, and every Church of God girl had this neck thing going. I don't know how they did it, but all the girls could do it. None of those guys were like, all right, right, didn't work. But I can say this: that it's the work. hair. They just, get me back on track there. Land this plane. Uh, <laughs> take me back. Take me back before I started on the neck thing. Oh no, you didn't. I prayer uh, request. What you? What, uh, God, what God expects of you? What God what, expects of you? Not what you expect of God. Not what you expect God to do. But that. But that's just if if you're in a relationship with somebody and all you do is expect them to serve you. Imagine how often we treat God like He's our servant. Yeah. yeah. Right. And the thing about it is, is when Christ comes, what does He come like? Yeah, a servant, like a right? Yeah. And that's. Oh, I mean, but imagine that you're the Creator, the most powerful being in the universe. Mm-hmm. And you're happy in a relationship with somebody who's just so needy, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, gosh, you know, the the second time I asked some of my family to bring me, like if one of the kids, I'm like, hey, can you bring something up the stairs? Like if they get across <laughs> the stairs twice, there's a major, there's, there's a little a battle stairs, going in their head. Though. All right. We only well, got three minutes. We got three minutes. We're going to pray. Um, Kristen, I would like you to pray. Pray for Angie's dad. I will. Um, yes. Pray for, you know, what's going on with the COVID and all those sorts of things and pray for our governments and area businesses and people who are dealing with unemployment, the needs in our community. Yeah. Just, just pray. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's the COVID thing reminds me that we need to trust in the Lord, knowing that he knows all things. Like we don't yeah. know how far this is going to reach. You know, yeah. we don't have a picture. The government can't tell you. No one can tell you, but I know the one who does know Amen. and yeah. he's got Amen. it in his hands. Amen. So. Yeah, we will pray. I don't. Did I miss anybody's? If I did miss you, um, text us later. We we will be praying for you. Huh? Put it on the prayer chain with Mona. Hopefully, I did not miss anybody. But okay. Father, we just thank you for this time. Lord, we were talking about gratitude and sitting in your presence. Lord, we are grateful. We're grateful for the pantry you provided. We're grateful for this building you provide. We're grateful for the people who who fill it, Lord, the hearts that lift up this community, that lift up this church, Lord. Father, we know that church is not a building, but we are called to this building. We are called to this body, Lord. And Father, I thank you for each and every person that you have called to this body, Lord. And Father, for what they bring, their giftings, Lord. Father, I pray that you give them rest. I pray that you give them refreshing in your spirit. I pray that in the next few days as this lesson rolls around in their mind that they would seek you lord that it wouldn't be about the chore of seeking you the the time set aside but the joy and the delight in seeking you lord father i lift up the prayer requests both spoken and unspoken lord father we lift up pete right to you to you right now lord father i ask that you would be touching his body lord that you would be touching his brain that there would be no neurological damage that you'd be touching his body lord father that you would heal him from this this potential stroke lord father that his left side would work that his hand would work that his legs would work that every piece of his body that you are his healer and he is in your hands lord that everything that he has to face everything that he has to go through lord father i ask that you would be touching him by the power of your holy spirit right now that you would be healing him and father for his family i pray that you give them comfort lord i pray that you comfort kathy lord that she wouldn't feel afraid that she would know her hope and her rest is in you and angie and her family lord the same lord that her, their hope and rest are in you father and we thank you for what you're moving in that situation lord we thank you that pete is in your hands i give you glory first and foremost that he knows you lord that pete 
indeed is your servant, Lord, that he loves you and he delights in you, Lord. And I thank you for that because that is the most important thing. But, Father, we know how important his physical body is, and I ask that you would be touching him, Lord. Father, for all the other requests, anything that I can't think of, I, I think of Fred and Bev. They come to mind, Lord. I ask that you would be touching Fred's body, Lord, and giving Bev strength, Lord. Father, for our people who would be struggling physically or emotionally or anything else, Lord, I pray that you touch them. And, Lord, the area of business is the COVID thing, Lord. Father, I pray that you just move. May we be a beacon and a light in this community, Lord. The people that are affected, may they may we know that we shine because we shine of you, Lord. We're not just a building that provides social services, Lord, but we are a light to this community because we draw our light first from you. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you in all things, Lord. You are good, and we give you all praise, all glory, all honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Be real. Be loved. Be, be 